Greetings, people of the world. Matthew back with you here at Novora Autism for the start of a brand new Let's Play, and this is the one that I've been wanting to get a lot of attention on because this is perhaps the best PS3 game that I have ever played, and it's definitely the best game that I have ever played that has been produced within the last 10 years. Welcome to Eternal Sonata. There's just so many things that I love about this game. The characters, the gameplay, the graphics, the music, but most importantly, the storyline. This game has the greatest storyline that I have ever experienced in any video game ever, and I hope that you'll all get the opportunity to take the time to enjoy this game along with me. So let's take the opportunity to go to the options before we get started. So we're going to take the vibrations off, and we're also going to bring the music and the sound effects down to 75%. Um, the reason why that is is because of the fact that um, the voiceover actors, can, their voices can get drowned out sometimes by the music and the sound effects. So we're just lowering it so that you can be able to still hear the music and the sound effects, but that you're also still being able to hear the characters loud and clear. And I hope that you'll be able to hear me loud and clear too as we're going along. But yeah, hopefully you'll not have a problem with that. So you're also given the option of subtitles. We're going to leave those on. You can also have the subtitles on in English or in French. And you also have the option to have the English voice actors or the Japanese voice actors as we're playing this. So it's a great way to immerse yourself in a couple of different cultures while you're playing this game, which is really cool. And something else I'm also going to point out as well about the gameplay aspects um, that you don't have quite yet the av option available to you yet but it doesn't happen until you actually get the game started. Um, there is a option for you to be able to play this game multiplayer. It allows you to have different players be able to control the different characters that you can use in your party. It's like, it's similar to a Super Nintendo RPG called Secret of Mana. It had something similar in the way that you can have different players diff controlling the different characters in your party. So, yeah, it's like that, but because I'm just by myself here, I'm going to be controlling everyone. Also, as well, I should point out that this is the PS3 version of this game. There's also an Xbox 360 version of this game. There are some cosmetic differences between the two games, but there's also two major plot additions in the PS3 version. So I'm going to take the opportunity to point out in the annotations what the differences are between the PS3 version and the Xbox 360 version. And all I can say is that uh, no matter what happens, I hope that you all enjoy this game with me because, as I said, this is definitely the best story I've ever seen in a video game, and I hope you'll be able to enjoy it as much as I do, because it's just so deep. So, if you're ready, so am I. So, without further ado, let's get Let's Play Eternal Sonata underway. And it starts with a rather long opening sequence. I'm actually going to be making a point to omit some of the opening sequence because it does feature spoilers for when you beat the game. So I'm going to be editing those out. So it starts in this beautiful moonlit night in this meadow of flowers as we come cross paths with this middle-aged woman. Why did it happen? Why was she destined to die? What crime could a girl like that have possibly committed to deserve such a grim fate? She was only 14. And during those brief 14 years, what did she do? Simply cherish a love of music and revel in her girlish dreams. I'll never forget her. Even if the cruel passage of time should wear the threads of my memory so thin they break, I will always remember. So, once more, a new journey begins. I should point out as well that this elderly lady that we're looking at here, this is kind of a cameo for her. We only see her here and in one other spot, but it's not until much farther into the game. So, she's only going to appear twice. Emilia. And we'll be able to put a face to that voice later on. And so now, back over to the meadow.
Once again, it all comes to an end. So what is she referring to? Well, we'll learn more about that eventually. There are a lot of things that we'll learn about the, the characters of this game. It's lovely to meet you. Or perhaps it would be more fitting to say, welcome back. We'll learn more about that too. And so we just went past the omission that I was referring to. So yeah, that's um, omission I was referring to, as I mentioned before. That's for when you beat the game, so it was there was a reason why I left it out. And now for everyone's favorite thing about video games, the tourist promotion video! The beams combine, becoming a spotlight that paints the stage. The flowers awaiting the curtain's rise display faces of bright red and brilliant yellow. They turn their ears to listen to the performance that is about to begin. Accompanied by the gentle rhythm of a babbling brook, the birds begin to sing. Meanwhile, a mischievous sea breeze causes a rustling amidst the leaves of the trees, disrupting the concert. It is a familiar scene, one that has unfolded every morning since the beginning of time. And even now, the daily overture continues, its delicate, perfect balance never faltering, never changing. In the midst of this joyous orchestration, at the center of the morning's discordant musical performance lies a small village nestled deep in the wood. The name of the village is Tenudo. It sits atop a hill which overlooks the coastline. In fact, the town is only about four miles from the sea. Tenudo is very lucky in this regard, for the town enjoys a wonderful cool breeze and a view that is nothing short of amazing. And then there are the flowers. They seem to blossom almost everywhere in the town. They paint the landscape with color as far as the eye can see. And they are the reason Tenudo is also known by another name. The Village of Flowers. There is a harbor town at the foot of a hill that can be seen from Tenudo. When night falls, the lights from the town shine like diamonds and open the hearts of those who gaze upon their illustrious splendor. Under normal circumstances, one might expect to find a bustling shopping district for tourists in a village as beautiful as this one. However, no such shops are to be found, not here. In fact, the village is quite calm, almost strangely quiet. It is a place that exudes a peaceful tranquility, a tranquility that further increases its allure, as well as its mystery. And so that brings the tourist promotion video portion of this Let's Play to a close. And so now we come back to the meadow here in Tenudo. And it is here where we will once again join the middle-aged lady, this time accompanied by her little daughter. Isn't she a cutie? Mommy, why are there waves in the sea? A question of childhood curiosity. There are waves because of the moon. Because of the moon? 
There is legitimate proof to that. The moon charms the water in the ocean with its beauty. And because the moon is so beautiful, the seawater just can't sit still. <laughs> is that true? Really? Really? Don't you feel your heart start fluttering inside of you when you look at the moon? I do! Well, for me, this is a more recent occurrence. It's not something that's lifelong. And anyone who's seen my other Let's Plays will understand why that is. No, dear. There's not enough water. You need lots and lots of water, like the ocean, before it can make any real waves. Oh, I see. But that's weird. Why can't a little bit of water make waves, too? <laughs> well, you can if you throw, like, a rock in there. If you throw a rock in the puddle, then sure, there'll, there'll be ways to start to move then. The amount of water is the most important part of creating waves. That can be said about people as well. There are many things in this world that can charm people's hearts, just like the moon charms the sea. Yes, there is. Things like wealth, vanity, status, image, and power. People who are drawn to these things create waves, and the fear in their hearts makes the waves grow bigger and stronger. Indeed it does. The more people there are, the bigger the waves can become. And as the number of people grows, the waves grow bigger and bigger. It can lead people to start terrible conflicts. Kinda sounds like Ukraine these days, doesn't it? This is probably too hard for you to understand. Yeah, what are you doing saying things like that to your little daughter? But we'll let it slide since you are very wise. If something like that ever were to happen, the only way to stop it would be for you to jump into the ocean. How will that help? Because when you do, those big waves will become calm again. It may be difficult to do, but if you can be very brave, you'll bring joy to the person who means the most to you. Wouldn't that be her mother? Then I'll do it! <laughs> yeah, if it were only so easy. Comparing seawater stirred up by the beauty of the moon to the ugly waves created by the effects of human desire is rather an insult to the ocean. And so we'll leave these two alone for a while. So off to another location. October 16th, 1849, 10.48 p.m., number 12, Place Vendôme, Paris, France. So what are we doing here, at this place, on this date, at this time? Well, the answer is in the bed. He seems to have calmed down, hasn't he, Doctor? He doesn't look like he's in pain the way he did before. It seems as though he must be having a pleasant dream. Sounds good. Yes. Well, that would be nice. It would be even better if that means he's headed towards recovery. A full recovery. Yeah, our boy here, he's got a bit of an affliction. It's said that people can have the most peaceful dreams just before they pass on. Um, ouch? What are you talking about? How can you say that? Yeah, I mean, come on, you're a doctor. You're supposed to be getting their hopes up, not crushing them. It's just an old wives' tale. Well, let's hope for your sake that it is. Yeah, we'll get to learn more about Frederick later. So now, we can officially get into gameplay in this Let's Play. So, we start with Chapter 1, subtitled Raindrops. And so we get an opportunity to look at some more beautiful scenery in this game. There is a lot of beautiful scenery in this game that you are just going to absolutely fall in love with. And this is where it starts, at the Path to Tenuto. And you might remember the little daughter from before? Well, here she is now, all grown up. Mom's probably worried about me. 
I'd better get home before it gets dark. Yeah, that's a good idea. Don't want your mama to get worried. So, it's here where we'll take the opportunity to formally introduce you to our lead heroine, and her name is Polka. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, what's she doing with a name like Polka? Well, in Eternal Sonata, almost everything and everyone is named for some sort of musical reference. And so, you'll see that over the course of this game a lot, how many different musical references are used in both the places we go to and the people we meet. And Polka is just one such demonstration of this. I'll, I'll take the time to provide in the annotations definitions for these musical terms for these characters and these place names as we go along. So, let's be on our way. And we have there, this little thing right here, this is the save point. So you can come here, save your game, and that will be, of course, what you need to do over the course of this game if anything ever goes wrong, or of course if you need to take a break. And I've talked about how beautiful the places are in this game, and also a lot of the monsters, and it's hard to call them monsters, some of them are very adorable, like this little bouncing bulb here on the left. And yeah, that actually is an enemy, so let's go ahead and engage it. live in the forest around here aren't really very strong so I should be able to defeat them without too much trouble but just to be safe I'll go over the basics of how to fight again and that won't be necessary Polka I'll take it I'll describe how things work in this game so basically here's how the gameplay in the field of battle works in Eternal Sonata they have basically taken everything that people like about turn-based style combat in RPGs like Final Fantasy and they've combined it with melee style combat in RPGs from games like The Legend of Zelda and they've combined it into what we see here in Eternal Sonata. So basically to let you know, um, you notice the little icon that's, that says next that keeps bouncing on the left side? That's where the enemy is and that's where we have to go in order to engage it. So as I mentioned before, um, this is turn-based. Each character gets their own turn, both characters and villains. However, you are responsible for initiating all actions that your character will do, so that's where the melee aspect comes in. So, you can basically do whatever you want um, with what you have. They indicate down at the bottom what you can do. You can use X to attack, circle to defend against any attacks that your opponent might do, Swear is for your items. They have to be preset. I'll explain that later. And triangle is your special ability. Now, I'll point out as well that there is, you may have noticed under Polka's name, there is no such thing as MP in this game, which means you can use your special abilities as often as you want within the time limit. And yes, there is a time limit. If you see the blue bar that has the number 5 on it, that is the number of seconds that you have to initiate the actions that your character can do. And you can do them as much as you want, at least for now. Because the in the upper left corner we see an infinity symbol, an infinity symbol. that is your tactical time. That means you can take as much time as you need to for now to decide to do any of your actions, but when you do it, initiate an action, then your time will decrease. So basically, I can do whatever I want. I can run around, I can hit an attack, I can use a special ability. And also something that's really interesting is that um, the special ability, depending on where you're standing, will actually change. You notice right now that Polka is in a spot where it's sunny, but there are also trees that provide shadow in this game. And so what happens is that you saw me use the orange glow ability. That's her healing ability. But if I step over into the shadows, her ability is changed. It now goes from a healing ability to an attack. And a long range attack at that. So we'll get more abilities as we go along. She'll get more different abilities to attack and to heal with and whatever. So now let's engage the enemy for real this time. So, as I said, you have to initiate all the actions that your character does, and that includes attacking. You have to keep pressing the attack button so that your character continues to attack 
and doesn't have a break in their action. However, you don't have to button mash the crap out of the attack button. You just All you have to do is just keep pressing the attack button as often as it takes to ensure that there is a continuous stream of attacks. You don't have to hit it any more times than that. So, we can now continue on. And check out some more of these beautiful hills and rivers. Yeah, check out the reflection on the river. That's very beautiful. Let's go ahead and engage this enemy. And if you hit an enemy from behind, then you get an initiative. They can con do conversely do the same against you. And as well, you may have noticed the starting positions for this battle were different from the previous battle. This is because that, thanks to the random number generator, the, all the characters and all the bad guys start in random places every single time you start a new battle. So, you'll have to take that into consideration every time you start a new battle. But we should be able to beat this guy no problem. So let's go ahead and beat him up. Yeah, in fact, I'm so strong, even at experience level 1, that Polka can kill it off in one turn. If it's close enough. So, over here, we can also find ourselves a treasure chest. Treasure chests will usually contain healing items, but they'll also contain weapons and armor, and also some uh, status deflectors. Here we find a peach cookie, which is the initial healing item of the game. And then we can cross over the bridge here. And also, I'll point this out as well. Since we just transitioned over to another section, if I go back to the previous section... Then, and only then, can I make the enemies respawn. So, if you wanted to just keep fighting the same enemy in the same spot over and over again, you can just go back and forth between two sections, and you'll be able to attack the same enemy if you want. But, of course, we want to keep going back towards Tenuto. And so, this time we have two enemies on the field. Another tip that you should use, try and hit the enemy either from behind or from the side, because... The enemy will have the possibility to be able to defend against your attacks if they are, if you're attacking from the front, from the front, and you can do that conversely to them as well. So let's just whack the crap out of this bulb, and so that's another 36 experience points. Yeah, here's check out the harbor view. Oh, the ocean is sparkling. It looks so beautiful. Well, we can't see it from here, but I can assure you that it is beautiful. Alright, so now over across another bridge. And we should see... Yeah, here's another enemy. So, two more. Yes, I know you can there, Polka. So let's start beating it up. I'm gonna... You have to use a special ability here because I was running out of time. So... The enemy will typically come after you, but sometimes, if it's back its turn, it will, like, do a, a silly little arch to try and get around so that it is facing you. Yeah, there was a demonstration of the enemy being able to defend against my attack. Fortunately, it wasn't able to defend very many, so... Yeah, I like the little Native American-style tapestry that they have set up here. Don't know why they would use a Native American-style, though, because... A lot of the clothes in this game are like Victorian era. So we get another cutscene, and if you've seen my promos, you know where we're going with this. There are so many people living in Retardando. Why won't any of them buy from me? Well, we'll find that out soon enough. And suddenly something grabs Polka's attention. It's a little squirrel. Yeah, it's coming towards Polka and she wants to touch it. Come on, it's okay. You can come to me. But then the squirrel suddenly has a change of heart. And this distresses Miss Polka. I guess you don't want to be touched by me either. So why would Polka feel this way? Well, that can be described by the cutscene that comes next. It works very well. Please, give it a try. Yeah, Miss Polka here is a merchant of sorts. However, there is a problem. Floral powder? Hmm. I didn't know people still made that. 
What with the mineral powder we can get these days? Why would anyone need that stuff? Now, I don't mean to be rude, honey, but floral powder just isn't useful anymore. Yeah, Miss Polka is a merchant, but she's a merchant of an antiquated item that people no longer seem to have an interest in. Hmm. I guess no one around here wants to buy it. What, you don't have other towns that you can go to to sell? Hey, what was that but then, for? this happens. Yeah, we had a bit of a fracas going on. Yeah, and everyone that's close by is just looked on in shock. And doesn't bother to help the man, except for Polka. Are you alright? And so here she goes. Using a skill in this game that is actually rather rare. And everyone just looks on. Well, did that help? Does it feel any better? And her reward for being a good Samaritan? Stay away from me! D d don't touch me! Is that everyone runs away from her. Wow! Did you see that, Mom? She was glowing! Come back here right now! Never go near anyone that glows like that girl did. Do you understand me? But why? Because I said so, that's why. Now come on. Yeah, not being able to sell floral powder is actually the least of Miss Polka's worries. So we get another peach cookie. Yeah, that's something we're going to find out over the course of this game of Polka's plight here and how much it is a focus in this game. So let's keep beating up some more bulbs. And we got another one right close by. In fact, she doesn't even have to move very far to beat it up. Alright, so far so good. Oh, I still have time, okay. Yeah, I still had a little bit of time. Yeah, you you have to use up all of your time in the iner in the initial stages of the game before you can um, have the enemy can make their move. But we got rid of it. And so away we go. More bulbs to beat up. And this time they're right next to each other. Now if they're right, like literally right next to each other, you can hit both of them at the same time. You can hit both at the same time, which means you can also kill both of them at the same time. So you can basically get like, you can basically get like a double play. And if you get three enemies right next to each other, and you beat them up and kill them all off at the same time, well, that's a triple play then. And so... Oh! <laughs> I used my special ability when I didn't need to, and the enemy died off anyway. Yeah, there, there are times when the game will glitch like that, and the, car the enemy, you will have killed it off, you'll have run it out of its HP, but you'll use your... You could end up using a special ability, or your turn will end, and then, on the delay, the enemy will be officially killed off. Yeah, that, the game will glitch like that sometimes. It's really funny to see that happen when it does happen. So, we get the opportunity to now... We have actually now reached Polka's hometown. And, yeah, we've been here before. So, we're now officially entering Tenuto Village. Or, I guess and for Polka, she is returning to her village. So really, not much to do here. Just all you're going to do is really um, cross over the bridge and we'll go over to Polka's house, which is right here. So yeah, this is where Polka lives, with her mother. And I've already mentioned who she is before. We've already seen her in, earlier in this episode. And it it wasn't mentioned yet, and it's not mentioned until much later in the game, but her mother's name is Solfege. So, as Polka returns home... Welcome back, Polka. Oh, you must be exhausted. I've made some nice hot stew. 
Yeah, but there's a problem. Polka has a question that she needs to have answered. Mom, do you... Are you afraid to touch me? You used your magic in Retardando, didn't you? Yes, she did. Why does everyone avoid me? Because they think they'll get sick if they touch you, even though it's not true. Yeah, they are. You remember how she was able to use magic? Well, there is a serious side effect that comes with it. You are not alone, Miss Polka. Polka. And so, as night descends on Tenuto, we'll leave these two alone and come back to them another day. <laughs>